The USL Championship is the USA's second tier football competition. It's made up of 31 teams in four divisions. There are some small teams, some MLS reserve teams, and some bigger teams that are aspiring to become MLS clubs. But before we get into the stadiums, today's video is sponsored by the One Football app. If you're unfamiliar, the One Football app is a great way to keep up to date with everything going on in the world of football. And there is plenty at the moment. You simply just follow your favorite teams and competitions. The news feed and notifications then adjust according to your preferences. Also, there are fixtures and results from hundreds of leagues from around the world. So, if you're interested, please download the One Football app by clicking the link in the description. Here are the USL Championship 2021 stadiums. Patriots Point Soccer Complex, home to the Charleston Battery. You can certainly see why it's called Patriots Point. I love that song. It's part of a stadium triangle and shares facilities with the softball and baseball stadiums. It has since been upgraded since the arrival of Charleston Battery. American Legion Memorial Stadium, home to the Charlotte Independence. It's quite an old stadium. Incredibly, before Bank of America Stadium was built in 1996, this was the biggest outdoor stadium in Charlotte. It too was recently renovated to make it more suitable for soccer. The best feature of the stadium though would probably be that view of the Charlotte skyline. Dillon Stadium, home to Hartford Athletic. It's yet another stadium that's fresh off a renovation. And although it still remains a very simple design with stands on two sides of the field, it does look quite nice, in particular the exterior which is done up in Hartford Athletic colors. An interesting little tidbit about this stadium is that it has actually hosted the US national team against Bermuda in 1973. It was seemingly a bit of a mismatch, but the US actually won, 1-0. Big upset. That was meant to be a joke, but um, they did actually get smashed by Bermuda earlier that year. Segra Field, home to Loudoun United. Brand new and purpose built for Loudoun United. It seems like a nice location, a fair way out of the city, there's plenty of greenery, and it is a good spot. But it's not as tranquil as it appears. There's actually an airport right nearby, and a prison for that matter, and a power plant. But still, it looks like a great place to watch soccer. Ricardo Silva Stadium, home to Miami FC. It's clearly a stadium designed for college football. You don't see bench seating on a soccer stadium too often. But putting that aside, it's a great facility and it has the largest capacity in the USL Championship. You just have to ignore the FIU Panthers branding throughout the stadium. MSU Soccer Park, home to the New York Red Bulls reserves. Just like the main New York Red Bulls, the reserve team plays in New Jersey as well. I've got to give credit to you New Yorkers. Your dedication and love for New Jersey is very strong. You might even call it an infatuation. It's yet another one on a college campus and it's a very simple stadium as you can see. But I do like how one side of the field is just a wall of trees. Highmark Stadium, home to the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. It's situated in what is perhaps the most remarkable location of all the stadiums. Separated from the river by only some train tracks. And on the other side, there's a very steep hill, almost a cliff face. The stadium itself is very rudimentary. It's just made up of a simple stand, as you can see. But at least it's facing the right direction. Al Lang Stadium, home to the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Well, the last one has some competition for the best location. You could probably tell that the stadium's design has baseball in mind. However, it has been reconfigured into a somewhat soccer-specific stadium. 
and to be honest, I don't think that baseball-style grandstand detracts from the stadium in any way. It just makes it a little unique. Fifth Third Bank Stadium, home to Atlanta United Reserves. This is another one that belongs to a college, but it's probably the best college stadium so far. It's located out in the suburbs of Atlanta and has been a really successful stadium. It's used year round, not to mention that it looks pretty good as well. BBVA Field, home to Birmingham Legion. Located within the UAB campus and fresh off a major renovation that doubled the capacity and made it look a heck of a lot better. I mean, beforehand it was as basic as it gets. IU Michael A. Carroll Track and Soccer Stadium, home to the Indy 11. So apparently Indianapolis is too long to say, but that stadium name is fine. Alright. Although it's built for track and field, it is a nice little design. It has a bit of character. Also, it's not a bad location, right by the White River. Oh look, there's the stadium they used to play in. Lynn Family Stadium, home to Louisville City FC. Now this one is probably the best soccer specific stadium in the US outside of the MLS. If you told me a stadium had a brown tin roof, I wouldn't have high hopes, but it looks extraordinary. And I like the way they've kept one end open to allow views of the Ohio River. Although they could potentially expand it in the future, and I'd imagine they would build a stand on that side. AutoZone Park, home to Memphis 901. It's an excellent stadium for baseball, so I guess that translates into an okay stadium for soccer. It's in a great location too, right in the heart of downtown Memphis. Plus, it looks good. I'd probably take this stadium over some of the upcoming high school football stadiums in this video, even if they are rectangular. Taft Stadium, home to Oklahoma City Energy. Well, this is a high school stadium but it was renovated a few years ago to better suit OKC Energy. It's actually a nice little stadium. It has a good looking brick facade and a grass berm to sit on, which sets it apart from the other high school stadiums in this video. Children's Mercy Park, home to Sporting Kansas City Reserves. If you saw my MLS stadiums ranking video, then you'd know that this was the highest ranking soccer specific stadium. It's a beauty, a very unique roof design as well as an overall clean modern aesthetic. I bet the players in the reserve team were glad they weren't relegated to a random high school stadium or something. One Oak Field, home to FC Tulsa. It's one of the better looking minor league baseball stadiums, especially the zinc plated exterior that's inspired by oil drilling due to the city's oil heritage and the baseball team is called the Drillers. FC Tulsa did consider a similar name for their team that ties into that history. They were actually going to be called the Tulsa Mother Frackers. The name wasn't approved, not sure why. I can only assume it's because double-worded nicknames aren't too common in soccer. Bold Stadium, home to Austin Bold. An appropriate name for a stadium that's located in a racetrack, that was a very bold decision. It's the Circuit of the Americas to be specific. And the colour scheme is also very bold, but I like it. One potential issue is that if somebody's brakes fail on this corner, there could be trouble. Widener Field? Home to the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. It's a brand new $35 million stadium opening this year. It will have apartment buildings within feet of the field. Weidner? Apartment buildings. They are a part owner of the switchbacks. The buildings do partially block the stunning mountain backdrop, but you'll still get a pretty good view from your seats. Southwest University Park, home to the El Paso locomotive. 
This stadium's design is more fitting than you might expect. The exterior is inspired by El Paso's Union Station, which ties in perfectly with the team name Locomotive. And just like the last one, there's a stunning mountain backdrop, but also the El Paso city skyline. Isotopes Park, home to New Mexico United, and the minor league baseball team, the Albuquerque Isotopes. There's no Albuquerque Isotopes! Yes, there is. Look it up. It's one of the finest minor league baseball stadiums there is. It has an excellent view of the mountains once again, a Simpsons-esque exterior, and statues of the Simpsons family, minus Maggie. Maggie did have a statue, but it was torn down by protesters due to her controversial comments on gun control. I quote, Why y'all be taking my guns away? Mr. Burns is a punk ass bitch and deserve to be shot. End quote. Zion's Bank Stadium, home to the Rao Monarchs. Strange name. Rao means royal, doesn't it? So, royal monarchs? Aren't all monarchs royal? Anyway, the stadium is part of the Rao Salt Lakes training complex. Just like the last three, it has a stunning mountain backdrop. But then again, I think every stadium in Utah does. Something slightly odd about this stadium is that one side has bucket seating and the other has bench seating. HEB Park, home to Rio Grande Valley FC. Ooh, I like this one. The exterior reminds me of TDECU Stadium, also in Texas. Not the shape of the exterior or anything, but that silver and red facade, it looks great. One thing that might be an issue is the fact that it has two big stands on each side and two open ends. It might act as a wind tunnel, not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong any Ariane, uh, correct me if I'm wrong any Rio Grande fans out there. Something I do know is that before the stadium was built, the site was an abandoned water park. Toyota Field, home to San Antonio FC. With a few extra seats and maybe an extra roof canopy, this wouldn't look out of place in the MLS. And they came so close, but Austin FC quashed their dreams. It's right by a highway, and I definitely think thousands of people driving by have mistaken it for a Toyota dealership. Forget about an abandoned water park, this one has a functioning amusement park next door. Dignity Health Track Stadium, home to the LA Galaxy Reserves. Despite what you may think, it's actually a really complex design. Firstly, you have the main grandstand here. And if all of that wasn't enough, there's space for plenty of temporary seating as well. Cashman Field, home to the Las Vegas Lights. Despite what it may seem, Cashman Field is now a soccer-specific stadium after it was renovated in 2019, because the baseball team now has their own brand new stadium. Despite being a slightly unusual shape for soccer, I think it actually looks really good. Laney College Stadium, home to the Oakland Roots, the newest addition to the USL Championship. It's located right next door to Oakland's best baseball stadium. As you can see, it's the home of the Laney Eagles first and foremost, but a new team has put down roots at this ground. Obviously, it's not made for soccer, but at least they don't have all that Laney Eagles branding and gridiron showing when they play there, due to a modular turf system that they use. Championship Soccer Stadium, home to Orange County SC. This stadium looks great, especially the way the seating has been carved into those berms of, well, it's not grass. It looks like rattlesnake territory, but I like it. I am, however, slightly disappointed that the seats aren't orange, being Orange County and all. 
It's part of a huge sports complex. Wait a second, there's a giant orange. Well, that makes up for the lack of orange seats. Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex at Wild Horse Pass, home to Phoenix Rising. I've said it before, great name. There's something satisfying about seeing green grass in an arid environment. And there's plenty of that in Phoenix with all the golf courses in the area. It's not a bad little stadium, although I'd suggest bringing along a wide brimmed hat and some sunscreen. But the stadium that they have planned is a different kettle of fish. It looks incredible, and there's no danger of sunburn. Who puts fish in a kettle? Papa Murphy's Park, home to Sacramento Republic. Not to be outdone by San Antonio, Sacramento has what appears to be an even better amusement park right next door. But to be fair, the stadium itself is, well, it's inferior. But Sacramento don't care. They're getting a brand new stadium and they're... Yeah, what she said. There'll be a major league soccer team soon. Or so they thought. Those plans have been put on hold indefinitely, unfortunately. Torero Stadium, home to the San Diego Loyal. For the longest time, every time someone mentioned San Diego, I assumed people were pouring sand onto their waffles. Ah, oh, come on, who wrote that? That's f***ing shit. The stadium is located on the campus of the University of San Diego and hosts basically every type of football. Well, three types. This is an interesting design. The way the field is sunken into the ground allows basically all the surrounding buildings to view the game. Cheney Stadium, home to the Tacoma Defense. Or Defense. Tacoma Def... Tacoma Defense. The final stadium is yet another baseball stadium but the baseball team is actually outnumbered by two soccer teams that play there. It's located in a nice area, and as someone let me know in the comments of the baseball video I made, you can actually see Mount Rainier from some of the seats. That's pretty cool. Also, it has a pretty good looking exterior. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.